Hello everyone, good to see you again. My name is Anne Claire Mulman and our website is cwowi.eu and it stands for Church Without Walls International. And we are located in Europe, in the Netherlands. You can find a lot of teaching on YouTube, on Facebook channel. You can go to our website, find a lot of articles and teachings that can help you in your faith. And today I want to talk to, um, to you about you are washed, you are cleansed, you are sanctified and you are justified. The last video I talked about being redeemed. And all those words are biblical words, Bible words, but oftentimes we don't know what they mean. So that's why I'm teaching you a little bit of what it means to be washed, to be sanctified and to be justified. That comes from a scripture, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11. Paul talking to the Corinthians and they were sinners before they knew the Lord. He even says there in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, okay, you were unrighteous and you do know that unrighteous people do not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornications, idolatries, uh, adulteries, and, and so on. No thieves, no drunkards will inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says in verse 11, And such were some of you, and I love the word, you were like that. Paul says, you are not like that anymore. He says, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So they were a new creation. Yes, that's what that's not who they were, but that's not who they are right now. So what does it mean to be washed? When you look, the, look up the word in Greek, it refers to an entire wash, washing. It's the complete removal of sin and its death. David, after, uh, David prayed this prayer after Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. He says, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin and purge me with his help and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. That's what the Lord does. He washes away our sins, giving us a new birth, a new life through the Holy Spirit. And that happens when you are born again, an initial washing, an initial cleansing. But there's also a washing of water by the word. When you are a part of God's kingdom and you are initially washed, there's still a continuous washing. Washing of water by the word. Ephesians, uh, where is it? Chapter 5, 26. It talks about Christ uh, loving the church. And then it says that Christ, he loved the church that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. And the word word there is rhema, meaning something that the Lord speaks to you. So he sanctifies and he cleanses you by the washing of a rhema word. You probably know that when God speaks something to you and then it's like, wow, you know, every guilt, every shame, every whatever you thought about yourself is gone because he says, I love you and I can use you and you are beautiful, and you are perfect in my sight. And that is a cleansing by the word of God, by his rhema word. When he speaks to us, we feel cleansed, we feel refreshed. You know, when something is really the word of God, it will feel fresh, it will feel clean inside of you. So in 1 John, first chapter, verse 7, it says, when we, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Meaning, when you walk in the light that you have right now, doesn't matter if you are just born again, or maybe you walk with the Lord for 10 years or even more, the light that you have right now, you know, the light that the Lord shines on your life, you know, to, to handle some stuff or deal with some stuff, do that. You know, and he will cleanse you from all sins, even from the sins that you don't know yet. You, and that's what the Lord uh, does. So there is an initial cleansing and there's a cleansing by his rhema word. And there's a cleansing, you know, a continuous cleansing. So that is so wonderful. Then it says that we are also justified. What does it mean to be justified? Some say it's like, it means just as if, just as if you never sinned. And that's part, that's part true. It's just as if you never sinned, but it goes further. When a person is found not guilty, there is still a record in the court about the indictment that has been made. And that's, I know a lot of Christians who live like that. They feel, okay, my sins are washed away and he forgave me everything. But God still holds a record of what I've done in the past. There's still, a, a, so they are mindful of what, the, what they've done and who they've been. 
in the past. Yes, he forgave me. Yes, he cleansed me. But uh, the heaven recorded what I have done. But when Paul uses the word justification, it means uh, that when the court says that you are brought to the, to the court incorrectly and unjustly and therefore all records are wiped clean there is in heaven no record at all you know of what you have been charged with there's no record at, at all of your past sinfulness it's all gone it's cleansed it's washed away so when someone says okay open up the book and, and see uh, let me uh, look up uncle Mulman in the books of heaven there's no record of anything that i've done of my sinfulness of my past it is all gone Wow, amazing. So, and then, not only that, we are justified, we are clean, we are brought to the court incorrectly, unjustly. There's no record in court of heaven of our previous sinfulness. Amazing. Yes, of course, of our lives and what we've done since we were justified and how we lived according to what we knew in our spirit. Of course, the, that will be uh, recorded. And we have to walk according to that. But we are also sanctified. And in Greek, it means to make holy or to consecrate or to set apart and dedicate it to God. And that's actually what holy means. We are set aside for a holy purpose. In much the same way that the Old Testament priest would take, away, would take gold and silver utensils, remove them from everyday use, set them aside to be used ex exclusively in the temple of God. So you are set aside and you are to be used ex exclusively for God for a purpose. You are there, you are to be used by the one who gave you eternal life, who bought you, who cleansed you, who justified you, and who sanctified you. We are sanctified, set apart, and holy, because he is holy. And a lot of people say and think, oh no, I can't be holy. You know, you don't know what I still do. Okay, God forgave me, but you don't know how I uh, acted uh, ugly to my husband or whatever, or the thoughts I had. You know, I am not holy. I can never be holy on this side of the of, of, of heaven. But what does the Bible say? Ephesians 4.24, Paul says to the Ephesians, you put on the new man which was created after God in true righteousness and holiness. So in your spirit, when you were born again, when the Holy Spirit recreated your spirit, he created your spirit in true righteousness and holiness. So in your spirit, you are righteous right before God and you are holy. Amazing. Col Colossians 3 verse 10 says it's so beautiful. Uh, where is it? Colossians 3 10. Uh, it says, okay, okay, verse 9, he says, Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and you have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. You are cre in your spirit, you are created according to the image of him who created him. God is holy, so he made you holy. You are created according to his image. And then Paul says, of course, therefore, holy and beloved, yes, holy and beloved, put on, put on kindness and meekness, bearing with one another, and so on. He says, okay, that's who you, that's who you are in your spirit. Now you act, and now you put on those things. You put off the old behavior, and you put on the new things, and you act according to who you are in your spirit. Colossians 3 verse 3 says, your life is hidden with Christ in God. And I love it so, so much because oftentimes we think God sees us from heaven and he looks at our sinfulness and what we've done and how we behaved and so on. But when you think about this, that your life is hidden with Christ. So this is your life. It's hidden with Christ. So when God looks at you, he sees Christ. He sees Christ's righteousness and holiness. And together... You are, your life is hidden with Christ in God. Wow. So the devil has nothing to complain with. He has nothing to accuse you of because he sees, he doesn't see you. You know, you are hidden with Christ and together we are hidden in God. Amazing. Uh, whatever. Uh, Colossians 2 verse 10, it says, you are complete in him. You are holy and you are complete in him. And Ephesians 1 chapter 4 says, you are holy and without blame before him. There's no blame. He's not blaming you for the, for the things that you still do. In, in his sight, he looks at your spirit. You are holy and without blame in him. 
amazing. So we have to think to change our thinking because that's who you are in your spirit. And now you have to act that way, like who you are. Paul says in Acts 17 verse 28, in him we live and move and have our being. So you are in him. If you don't know who you are, go to the book of Ephesians, Colossians, look up scriptures about who you are in him and picture yourself being in Christ and God looking from heaven and seeing Christ not seeing you and not, not looking at, at who you are or what you are doing, but at who you are. And because you are righteous, because you are holy, it's your nature now. You can act holy, you can act righteous, you can do the right thing. It's not a struggle anymore because you are a new creation. That is your nature. Amazing. So yeah, you are washed from your sins, you are free, you are cleansed. And there's an initial cleansing, but a continuous cleansing. Of course, when you do something wrong or whatever, you say, Father, forgive me. And he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And he justified you. There is no record in heaven anymore of your past sinfulness. You are the Everything is wiped clean. And you are sanctified. You are made holy. You are made righteous. And you are in Christ and your life is hidden with God, Christ in God. So when you feel like condemnation, that's the devil, he is condemning you. You know, you know that it's the devil. God is not condemning you. He says in Romans, Paul says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus the moment you become you became born again. So there's no condemnation. If there is some condemnation, it's the devil. God and the Holy Spirit they are convicting you of when you do something wrong, you feel that sting sting in your spirit, you know you shouldn't have done it, but repent from it, okay, and, and it's it's done. It it's it's gone again. You are holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Colossians 1. Let me see that. Did I mention that scripture? Colossians 1 21. It says and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. In his sight, maybe not in your sight, but in his sight. And that's what matters, how he looks at you. See you next week. Bye-bye.